Uh, today we will merely focus on these four points. Firstly, uh, the absorption of nutrients. And secondly, the fatty liver and the ketosis. Uh, thirdly, uh, we will talk about the heat stress. Uh, you know, now, uh, now in the uh, summer season, cows are suffering from the high temperature. Yes. And uh, finally, the mastitis. Uh, hi, Eric. Mm -hmm. Uh, I learned uh, from the news that uh, in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, most uh, dairy farmers able to reduce the milk production. Yes, you know, uh, because of the COVID nineteen, the milk uh, demand mm -hmm. is reduced, mm -hmm. and uh, even worse, more and more dairy farmers are sending the dairy cows. To be turned uh, from the news yes, that uh, yeah. uh, in the United States, the current pandemic has impacted uh, the supply and demand uh, of dairy in the U.S. And dairy farmers are now facing a milk surplus. Milk now production. there's a surplus of yes. milk, partially uh, because people because stocked up early during the coronavirus the crisis and aren't buying now. Many stores and are limiting uh, their milk sales per family, and schools that would normally have milk in cafeterias aren't open. As a result, farmers are sending milking cows to the slaughterhouse. Uh, Last month, States. the current the pandemic has impacted the slaughter increased by 2.3%, according to the financial services company INTL FC Stone. According to David Dar, Senior Vice President and Chief Strategy and Sustainability Officer of the National Milk Marketing Cooperative Dairy Farmers of America, farmers aim to reduce milk production by 5% to 15%. After today's video, I, I totally understand what the farmers are feeling. Yeah. If I were the farmer, oh, uh, it uh, will also make me heartbreak. Yeah. But you know, um, they just send the part of their dairy cows to be slaughtered. Uh, maybe 15% because uh, milk and milk products uh, are also the needed to for every family. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, if it is needed, yeah. We send Mm -hmm. If you were a um, dairy farmer, uh, which kind of dairy cows we are using to slaughter? Uh, that's an interesting question. If mm -hmm. I was a farmer, maybe uh, I will choose uh, uh, the elder ones mm -hmm. and uh, the sick ones. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, uh, if the cows get sick, um, it may cannot produce uh, uh, much milk. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, feed it and uh, you know the feed uh, the treatment uh, it will cost much. Yes. Yeah. So uh, keeping high yielding cows is the best choice. Yeah. It will make you more profit and the same cost. Right. Mm -hmm. So, how to make sure the remaining uh, remaining cows to produce enough milk? Uh, it becomes much more important. Mm -hmm. Um, you got the idea. So yeah. let's move this uh, four points, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when uh, point one, the absorption of nutrients. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, the absorption of nutrients in dairy cows, mm -hmm. uh, normally in order to uh, get high milk yield, mm -hmm. lots of nutrients are added to the uh, to the feed of dairy cows. Mm -hmm. But the cows have limited uh, digestive capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, like a protective fat, right. one of the important nutrients to improve uh, milk production. Yeah. Uh, how to improve the absorption of nutrients uh, becomes very, very important. The best solution for this issue is the feed at you bio acids. I see. Uh, we have been studying bio acids for 16 years. Uh, it is used in fat absorption mm -hmm. and it's widely proven by uh, customers, many customers, uh, domestic and abroad. Uh, Bioacid can uh, promote the absorption of fat uh, and the fat soluble ingredients like uh, vitamin A, D, E and K. So the same ingredients in the feed, dairy cow will get more nutrients and uh, we got more milk. Oh, that's great. 
Uh, many customers, uh, you know, uh, they have the problems that uh, mm -hmm. they mis uh, most of customers misunderstand the uh, biases as emulsifiers. You know, uh, they, you know, oh. the emulsifiers can uh, promote the better utilization. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is the difference between the biases and the emulsifiers? Okay, that's a very good question. Ordinary emulsifiers only work in the first process of fat absorption. You yeah. know, there are three total three process of uh, fat be absorbed by the intestine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Bioacids uh, can emulsification. Uh, you know, bioacid can promote the uh, total three process of fat be absorbed. So, uh, bioacids is very important in total three processes. Uh, we can learn from a vivid video demo. Vivid video. Yes. In modern breeding industry, fat or oil content become more and more high in feed formulation. However, it's a complicated process for fat digestion with three steps, emulsification, digestion, and absorption. Different with emulsifiers, bioacids play an important role in the whole steps. Emulsification, bioacids have a special structure by which combined with hydrophilic elements and lipophilic elements. One of them can fix in water and another one will insert into the fat. Under this way, fat can be emulsified into little droplets, which will help enlarge the contact areas with lipase. Digestion. The suitable pH value for lipase is 8 to 9. But the pH value in the intestine is 6 to 7. Lipase doesn't work under this condition. The lipase can be activated by bile acids. When they combine together, as bile acids can open as cap and release the catalyzed elements. In the meanwhile, the structure of lipase is also changed, which can let fat droplets contact with catalytes. Under this way, fat would be hydrolyzed into fatty acids glycerinum and monoglycerite. Absorption Short-chain fatty acid would be absorbed directly, while long-chain fatty acid can only be absorbed after combining into chlorimicron with bile acids and a phospholipid. As one carrier, bioacids can help fatty acids get through the identification system of intestine epithelial cell and then pass into bloodstream in order to finish the absorption process. Okay, welcome back. Uh, the uh, video it clearly explains uh, uh, how bioacids work on the first on the three steps of fat utilization. From this video, we know uh, the biases is secreted by the liver or animals. But the secretion by animal itself is not enough to be used uh, for the nutrients. So um, it is needed to uh, supplement uh, biases matrix. So uh, it is best meets the, uh, the animal's needs and uh, it is the safest. Yes. Uh, that's why bioacid is the best and the unique solution for this issue. Okay, uh, let's move to the point two, fatty liver and the ketosis. Yes. Uh, especially in the perinatal period. It not only affects the uh, milk yield, but also uh, seri uh, seriously affects the health of dairy cows. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, you know that about uh, half of the cows have the uh, fatty liver problem. Half? Yes, very high. Uh, for these two problems, Dr. Lee have an article uh, published in our feed uh, during the perinatal period. Uh, you know, 
the feed intake of dairy cow decreases. Mm -hmm. um, this will lead to the disorder of the fatty metabolism in the liver and cause a large amount of ketone bodies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and fat accumulate in the liver. That but bile acid can regulate these processes and solve these two problems and the root. Mm. If you want to learn more about the, uh, this article, we provided a link to uh, the original article uh, in the introduction section below. So also you, you, uh, if you want to learn more details, please contact us. Okay, let's talk about the heat stress. Heat stress is a tough problem in the farming industry. All animals have this tough time every year. There are too much studies on heat stress, and it is still going on always today. In many areas around the world, summers are hot and long. This can lead to heat stress, which occurs when an animal's heat load is greater than its capacity to lose heat. Each year, over one billion U.S. dollars are lost due to heat stress in cattle in the United States alone. Annual losses in dairy and beef are estimated to be eight hundred ninety-seven dollars million dollars and three hundred sixty-nine million dollars, respectively. These monetary losses represent reduced milk yield and growth, impaired reproduction, higher treatment costs, and increased curling rates. A recent study from the research group at Loa State University showed that the in vivo administration of endotoxins drastically decreased the milk yield in hosting cows by 80%. Heat stress compromises gut integrity and allows toxic compounds such as endotoxins to enter a cow's circulatory system and trigger an inflammatory cascade. I wanted the inflammatory. Uh, I wanted the inflammation exacts additional costs on a cow's performance and welfare. So, what can be done to prevent the effect of heat stress? We have listed a few practical ones here. Provide shade at lying area, water and feed bunk. Allow slow air circulation, three to four meters per second, through side walls openings or by using fans. Stimulate frequency of visit to the feed bank by installing nearby sprinklers. Provide sufficient amount of good quality water, 9 cm linear space per cow or 1 drinking space per 10 cows. A meter, uh, meter hosting cow under his dress may consume over 120 liters of water per day. Offer high quality forages with good digestibility and adequate chopping length. Fiber is essential, but its metabolism produces more heat. Glucose precursors should be preferred as a source of energy or concentrated carbohydrates as glucose utilization increases significantly in ruminants during his stress. However, high consideration regarding the risk of acidosis should be taken. Use feed additives that support animal health animals during his stress. Biases can improve oxidant enzymes activity such as SOD, and the enzymes will reduce the heat stress. Now, more and more customers are using biases to support the animal health during summer season. Okay, I'm clear about the heat stress. Mm -hmm. Hope you also clear about this issue. And, uh, and then, uh, let's move on the point four. Yeah. The mice is in dairy cows. Uh, once you know uh, dairy cows get mastitis, uh, they can produce quality uh, milk. For this problem, uh, here is another solution. That is eucalyptus. The main active ingredient is eucalyptus oil. It's a very famous feed additive to replace antibiotics. It can kill bacteria completely replace the antibiotics, also can kill parasites. So, eucalyptus oil can be used into banning powder to prevent mastitis. 
And in this channel, we will introduce you kind of biotechs by detail. Mm -hmm. So follow us. Okay, uh, that's all the content we uh, share with you today. We believe our biases and ecobiotics, uh, all these four pro um, problems, and uh, give you healthy and uh, high yield dairy cows. Yes. Also, uh, think with the last chance, find the uh, difference. Follow uh, us, and uh, we will see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.